All right, welcome back. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Mine was pretty good. Uh, not too eventful, but that's not always a bad thing. So the purpose of our video today is to talk a little bit about why we should study philosophy. You know, when I created this class, uh, I had some things in mind that I wanted students to be able to take away from it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, then I'll talk about the assignment that I uploaded just a little bit ago on goals uh, and, you know, kind of why we're doing that. <clears throat> and we'll go from there. All right. So number one reason why we should study philosophy. So studying the study of philosophy and our first unit, which is going to be on logic, helps us become better problem solvers. That's what we do from, again, the time we were young to the time we are old, is we are attempting to solve problems. Some problems may be, you know, very small, very minor. Some problems may be huge and catastrophic. Um, whether the outcome of our, you know, problem, our issue is, you know, insignificant or extremely significant, the process in which we use to solve those problems uh, isn't too different. So logic helps us evaluate what we already know, helps us eval evaluate what we believe will happen, what we believe can happen, and our best, uh, our best path for going about solving this problem. You know, <clears throat> it doesn't really matter how old you are or how experienced you are, we can all become better at solving our problems. Um, you know, typically it's kind of easier to give advice to other people and how they should solve their problems than it is to take our own advice to solve, again, our own personal issues. Um, if you haven't kind of seen this yet, I believe you will, you know, the older you get. It's easier to tell people, other people what they should do instead of telling yourself what you should do. And, you know, that's just a... Uh, yeah, that's an interesting, you know, phenomenon in the human experience. <clears throat> uh, another reason that it's important for us to study philosophy and something else we can take out of this is it helps us become better communicators. Again, what is something that we do from the time we are small to the time we are, you know, full grown and, you know, exiting this life is we are communicating with other people. It's never a bad thing to be a good communicator. Um, we're trying to take what we see, what we think, what we feel in our soul, and we're trying to show other people what it is that you know, is inside of us, uh, whether, you know, mind, body, or soul. So how do you do so? Uh, has there ever been a time where you wanted to explain something uh, to you know, someone near you, someone close to you, but you just couldn't necessarily find the words. Or maybe you could, but it just wasn't, it wasn't a completely accurate picture that you were painting for them. Philosophy helps us become better communicators because, again, we have to, um, we have to be careful with the words we use. And the words we use definitely have meaning. And, you know, the, you know, there's, there's the whole saying that you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But words, essentially, I mean, yeah, they, they can hurt you, and they, and they have hurt people throughout time. So we have to be careful with what we say, how we say it. And this is how philosophy, again, can help us become better communicators is because it stresses the importance of the words that we use. You know, words definitely do have a, um, a distinct meaning, a distinct definition and as you know maybe you haven't seen it just yet but you will see it words that meant certain things when I grew up don't mean the same thing now uh, ask your parents ask your parents when they hear uh, words today that again they heard in their childhood a lot of a lot of the time they have completely different meanings and so that is actually helping us it's actually helping us become worse communicators because now we have a generational gap between the definitions of words. So how, again, or what, excuse me, can philosophy help us do? Not only can it help us solve our problems, it can help us communicate better. All right, number three, it helps us better understand other subjects. You know, we talked about this last week and how uh, logic is, or excuse me, math is rooted in logic. You have a problem, 
we just talked about that, you have a problem and your job is to solve that problem. Again, we're using logic. You know, algebra was definitely not my strong suit, but if we were to have, I don't know, uh, 2x plus 3 equals 12. Okay, so how are we gonna how are we gonna figure out that problem? Well, there's only a certain number that x can be. Again, this is part of that problem solving equation that we use internally to figure out you know our own issues. But we, we see this in math as well, and again, that is rooted in logic. Um, <clears throat> again, we look at subjects like English. Again, English, you're looking at a lot of literature. Literature is art. You know, it is, again, the internal thoughts of someone they have put on, on paper. So, again, you know, we're talking about aesthetics. You know, you can look at that the same way we, we talk about music. We, look, we talked last week about how science and, and metaphysics are definitely connected, uh, even though the term metaphysics means meta beyond physics being science. So, beyond science, beyond the physical world. Um, but we have to know what the physical world is and how we measure it before we can talk about what is beyond that. Uh, look at ethics, ethics and morality. Uh, that's essentially what we're studying when we talk about history. We're talking about how ethics and morality have formed the world that we have today and different structures and different uh, governments that have, again, taken morality and ethics and have used that to help create the society in which they have today. <clears throat> There's a lot that we can learn about other subjects from philosophy. It is the root of other subjects. Without philosophy, we wouldn't have all these other subjects. Um, that's why I think it's so important that we understand the foundation before we look at the rooms in the house. Last one, what else can you get from philosophy? Philosophy can help you be more persuasive. Now, why is being more persuasive? Why is that important? Well, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to talk some people into things, again, the older you get. And I don't mean in like a manipulative way, and I don't mean that at all, not in that sense. I mean, you're gonna have to show people that you have certain skills and abilities and that you deserve certain things. <clears throat> For example, guys, if you wanna get married, you know, you fall in love with a girl, and you want to get married, you're going to have to, you're going to have to convince her that getting married is a good decision. Uh, you're going to have to show certain character traits that um, can help her make that decision. You're going to have to ask her parents. Maybe that's just a traditional thing. I don't know. But you're going to have to convince her parents that you know, you're, you're a suitable, you're, you're a suitable person, that you, you have, um, you know, your, your wife, your future wife's best interest at heart. So again, that's not an easy thing to do. Think about if you, again, when you're trying to get into college, you're gonna have to write, um, you're gonna have to write like an admission statement or an admission essay. Why should we consider you for this school? Again, you have to be able to talk. You have to be able to communicate to people, which again, philosophy can help with that, but you also have to be able to argue in your favor or in favor of your ideas or in, maybe in favor of other people's ideas. You know, again, when we look at like attorneys, like again, they are, they have to be persuasive and they have to be good at not arguing, but good at debate and good at problem solving. Being more persuasive helps us take what we know and translate that to other people. Um, <clears throat> again, whether that be like in my profession of teaching or whether that be you know, eventually as you become a parent and you have to be more persuasive to your child because if you can't persuade your child to act in a certain manner, um, you know, you, they're going to they're gonna have a harder life. You know, children that act up and that act out and they get in trouble, you know, whether it be in school or with, you know, authority, um, you know, they're going to have a harder time adjusting to the real world, the adult life. So is it a good thing to be persuasive? Very much so, very much so. All right, last thing is your, uh, your assignment on goals. So again, the reason that I chose this as really one of our first assignments is because it is important that you have goals. To me, it really doesn't matter what your goal is, as long as it's something that's important to you, that's what matters to me. 
and I'll, I'll give you an example. So um, when I was, I was 18 years old, I went off to college to play baseball. Um, I, I, I was struggling, not necessarily on the baseball end of things, but like on the academic end of things. Um, I hadn't, I wasn't a good student, not definitely not in high school, and so I was kind of ill-prepared for college. Um, psychologically, I just wasn't in a good place. Emotionally, um, you know, so I decided to leave that school and come home, kind of get my act together. And one of the things <clears throat> that, one of the goals that I had to kind of get my act together uh, was losing some weight. Um, <laughs> everybody gains you know, wait when they go to college. And I, you know, wasn't, even though I was an athlete, you know, I wasn't like in the best of shape to begin with. So, you know, I got home, uh, you know, I wasn't like working out or running anymore. And again, the weight just kind of piled on. And so I decided, I mean, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slim down, we'll get in the best shape that I've ever been in. And during that process, again, it, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. You know, none of our goals are easy to attain or they wouldn't be important to us because anything that's easy isn't necessarily worth having. But, you know, in in a six month period, I've lost, you know, 60 pounds. A lot of that, you know, some of that was muscle. You can't lose that much weight without losing some muscle. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it completely changed the way that I looked at the world. Um, you know, it wasn't, and it wasn't necessarily uh, something that I thought that I could do. You know, I'd tried to lose weight, you know, previously in the past and, you know, maybe short-term success, but nothing long-term. But it taught me that if I really put my mind to it and I really stay disciplined and do the things that I know I should do, I can accomplish what I want to accomplish. And that's what I want you guys to learn. But you can't, me telling you that isn't, isn't what's going to do it. You have to experience that. Ever since, ever since my experience with that goal when I was 18 years old, it's helped me create other goals and create a plan to achieve those goals and stick to that plan. That's probably the hardest part, sticking to that plan. <clears throat> so again, with your goal assignment, I want you to fill out the three-step plan. I want you to fill that out. I want you to submit it back to me, and it's only going to stay. It's just going to stay between me and you. But I, I do want you to take that goal and what you write down and try to apply it. Again, if we can accomplish our goals, if we can accomplish our goals, well then, I mean, life really feels like you're living it, and it's not living you. And again, why do we study philosophy to to better understand everything else around us? Okay, so. Go ahead and knock out that assignment for me. We got a lot to learn. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And I can promise you that there will be concrete things that you can take away from this class. Okay? All right. So I will see you guys tomorrow.